lymphadenopathy. So the first thing that you need to know is what are the different important groups of lymph nodes that you should look for while examining for lymph nodes. So the first is the cervical group of lymph nodes. The second is the supraclavicular lymph nodes. The third is the axillary group of lymph nodes. And the fourth important one is the inguinal group of lymph nodes. So these are the basic lymph node groups that you should always look for. So we will be discussing them one by one. The first is the cervical group of lymph nodes which includes the horizontal group as well as the vertical group. The horizontal group lies above the fascia thus it is known as superficial group whereas the vertical group lies deep to the fascia so it is known as the deep group. The horizontal group includes the external valdez ring which includes the preauricular lymph nodes, the postauricular lymph nodes, the occipital lymph nodes as well as the submental and the submandibular lymph nodes and the vertical group of lymph nodes include the lymph nodes along the sternocleidomastoid muscle in the posterior triangle as well as along the, along the trachea and these lymph nodes are divided into different groups as different groups are involved in different diseases like the submental group is 1a the submandibular is 1b then the lymph nodes along the sternocleidomastoid are divided as 2 3 and 4 which are divided by lines like the line separating uh, passing through the base of the skull one line is passing through the hyoid bone and one line is passing through the cricoid bone so between the base of the skull and the hyoid bone is the group 2 between hyoid bone and the cricoid is group 3 and below the cricoid is the group 4 then the lymph nodes within the posterior triangle are group 5 and in the pretracheal and the paratracheal lymph nodes are group 6 okay and how do you palpate the cervical lymph nodes you usually stand behind the patient and then palpate for the lymph nodes and the side on which you are palpating you ask the patient to bend the neck on that side so that the muscle and the fascia gets relaxed and you can palpate the lymph nodes properly the second is the axillary group of lymph nodes which includes the anterior group within the anterior axillary fold the posterior group in the posterior axillary fold the central group in the central part of axilla and if you go deep with, within the central part then you can palpate the apical group of lymph nodes and the lateral group of lymph nodes lie along the humerus and you uh, how you would palpate them is uh, if you are palpating for the right side you would ask the patient to rest his arm over the right arm of the doctor and then with the right hand the patient can uh, the, uh, the doctor can palpate the anterior lymph nodes along the anterior axillary fold then the central nodes the apical nodes and the posterior nodes and for the later nodes either you can go behind the patient and then palpate with the right hand or you can stand in front of the patient and palpate with your left hand so these are the axillary group of lymph nodes then there is supraclavicular and infraclavicular group of lymph nodes the supraclavicular lymph nodes lie between the anterior and posterior uh, head of the sternocleidomastoid and the supraclavicular lymph nodes are called as virtuose nodes then is the inguinal group of lymph nodes uh, which again is divided into superficial and deep superficial is the one which we can palpate and it is horizontal that is it lies along the inguinal ligament and another is the vertical that lies perpendicular to the inguinal ligament and the deep are the ones that are present in the femoral canal and they are known as cloquet nodes so these are the different group of lymph nodes now once we have palpated the group of lymph nodes you need to know whether that enlarged lymph nodes are significant or not that is if that enlargement is pathological or not for this we look at the size of the lymph nodes if the size of the inguinal lymph nodes is more than 2 cm if the cervical or axillary group of lymph nodes have a size more than 1 cm or if the epitocular or supraclavicular lymph nodes are palpable with any size we call it as significant lymphadenopathy one controversy here is that for axillary lymph nodes some book says that if it, it is significant if the size is more than 1.5 cm now once we have found that the lymph nodes are enlarged we need to know what is the cause for that enlarged lymph node for this you should always first check that if the lymph node enlargement is generalized or not that is 
more than one group of non contiguous group of lymphodes is involved or not because if it is involved then it is probably generalized and it is due to systemic diseases whereas if only one group of lymph node is involved it is usually due to disease of the local draining area or it may be due to systemic disease also which is in its early course so the generalized lymphadenopathy can occur due to systemic diseases whereas the localized lymphadenopathy can occur both due to local disease as well as the systemic disease now the different systemic diseases which can lead to generalized lymphadenopathy are one can be the infections in which tuberculosis typhoid syphilis ebv hiv toxoplasmosis histopal histoplasmosis can be the causes the autoimmune disorders like sle sarcoidosis or jogren can cause hypersensitivity disorders like kawasaki neoplastic disorders like lymphomas and leukemias and drugs like phenytoin captopril nsaids and carbamazepine can cause generalized lymphadenopathy whereas for the localized lymphadenopathy you should always first uh, uh, rule out the local causes like for cervical lymph nodes the local infections of the tonsil the pharyngitis the infection of the posterior one third of the nose or tuberculosis can lead to cervical lymphadenopathy in this the tonsillitis characteristically leads to enlargement of the jugular digastric lymph nodes whereas also in the chronic tonsillitis if they are enlarged then it is known as wood sign or wood lymph nodes the cervical lymph nodes can also be enlarged due to tonsil cancer the nasopharyngeal cancer the laryngeal can- cancer thyroid cancer or the lung cancer and the important thing is in some of these cancers the enlarged cervical lymph nodes is usually the presenting complaint next in the axillary group of lymph nodes it can occur due to local limb infection or a breast abscess and it can occur due to local breast cancer or the malignancy of limb like the melanoma then there is supracervical lymph node which is very very important if there is a supracervical lymph, lymph node enlargement of the left side left side it is known as trozier sign and it can occur due to various causes it can occur due to breast malignancy lung malignancy gi malignancy bladder malignancy gonadal malignancy and out of this gi malignancy is very important and this enlargement is probably due to a ref, uh, reflux of the tumor cells uh, from the thoracic duct into the duct supplying the supracervical lymph node and for gi malignancies it is very important so it should always be a part of a per abdominal examination to check for the left cervical supracervical lymph nodes then then next is the inguinal lymph nodes and we should know that the vertical group of lymph nodes drains the lower limb so any pathology of the lower limb like the lymphedema or the cellulitis or the malignancy will involve the vertical group of lymph nodes whereas the scrotum the anus below the dentate line and the perineum mainly drains into the horizontal group of lymph nodes you should uh, remember that the external genitalia mainly that is the testes and the ovaries mainly drains into the paraortic lymph nodes which lies within the abdomen and we know that the ovaries are within the abdomen and testes are also initial in the abdomen so they will drain into the paraortic lymph nodes so wh- whenever you have a swelling of your testes or ovaries you should always check for the epigastric lump as they will present due to enlargement of the paraortic lymph nodes in case of high tumor load of the testicular cancer or if the testicular cancer and seeded into the scrotal skin in that case the inguinal lymph nodes can be involved but primarily the paraortic lymph nodes are involved and the aperitocle lymph nodes which are present 5 cm above the trochlea on the medial aspect of arm can also be involved and the important disorders that you should know are syphilis and the cat's crest disease so these are the different causes which can cause lymphadenopathy so what on examination you can look for to guess the etiology of the lymph lymphadenopathy like if you have a enlarged lymph node what all you can look for on examination to check its etiology like like first is the size which you should always look for to check if the enlargement is significant or not 
the second is one you can check if there is tenderness present or not as the tenderness can be present in infectious condition next you should check for the consistency as the hard consistency is present in case of malignancy whereas soft to firm consistency can be normal or it can be present in the infections as well as the autoimmune disorders whereas the characteristic indian rubber consistency is present in the hodgkin lymphoma next you should check whether you are pal able to palpate the different lymph nodes separately or they are matted together because in case of tuberculosis due to periadenitis the surrounding lymph nodes come together due to fibrosis and their palpate is at the single mass that is known as matted lymph nodes and the last one is you should check the mobility of the lymph nodes to the surrounding structure as well as to the skin which can be decreased in case of malignancy and may be present in the chronic dis disorders.